everybody, I'm Patrick. I'm here today to talk about building graphical command line apps with JavaScript. Uh, first off, just a quick apology. There's a little miscommunication this morning. Uh, they posted this that says that Patrick was going to give it. That's actually my son. Um, he was prepared to give a talk, but he didn't finish his slides. Uh, so I'm going to just go with the one that I'm doing. Anyway, if you want to network with him, though, he's back there. Uh, he has a lot of cool new thoughts. Uh, so anyway, who am I? Uh, I am uh, Patrick, like I said. I'm a program manager for Edge. Uh, I've been a web developer for um, actually 11 years. This is an old slide. Uh, before that, I did a lot of like sysopy stuff, and as a result, I've always kind of lived in the terminal. Like I use Vim and Tmux and all that type of stuff. Um, outside of that, I do a lot of JavaScript stuff. One of the more popular things I've been involved with is the maintainer for Modernizer. Uh, does anybody here not know Modernizer? Just out of curiosity. Awesome. That makes this a little bit easier. Um, and those last two things kind of combined into this talk, which is what I'm going to talk about today. If you're not uh, aware, about two years ago now, we actually shipped Modernizer 3, which is an update to the website, and it made everything like completely modular instead of one big monolithic file like before. To what it looks like now if you go to Modernizer. And it was cool. I was really proud of everything that the team did. We did a lot of great stuff, but the crappy thing was that most of the users of Modernizer still have to go to the website to actually get the file. And being 2017 with all the tools we have with like NPM and Bower, it's really kind of bizarre to have to go to a website to get a JavaScript file. And so we had a lot of think on it. And we, I kind of wanted to combine the really neat menu that we did there with my other love, the terminal. And uh, you know, we, that whole thing was was JavaScript powered and it was 2016 at the time so the solution like most things was to use React. Um well, not really. We used a thing called React Blessed, which is just a React wrapper around a, uh, a thing called Blessed. Uh, and what Blessed is, is a curses-like library with a high-level terminal interface API for Node. That's from the README. I think that's kind of gobbledygook. Basically, uh, it's a JavaScript library to make really neat uh, command line applications. You can make units and stuff, and React kind of wraps around it. So it was awesome. It was exactly what I wanted to do. So um, <clears throat> what can Blessed do for you? It can do a lot of stuff. Uh, first of all, obviously, like basic layout. So what that means is you can do Oh, hold on, sorry, going to jump between stuff. Oh, hey, buddy. Uh, so you can do stuff like this where, oh, no, sorry. Uh, when you resize applications, sorry, he's upset he didn't get to speak. Um, when you resize stuff, it'll automatically reflow the layout inside of it. Let's get that a little bit bigger, though. Um, it can do mouse controls, so it can actually uh, interactively take over from that, so you can see. Ooh, text. Uh, you can click on stuff and it actually works. Uh, you can scroll inside of boxes. Uh, you get hover styles, but I was too lazy to add one. Um, you can do keyboard controls. That one's kind of neat. Um, you can do something like this. Where oh, You can do Pong and oh, hold on. I'm really crappy at Pong, so I don't like to lose. Hold on. Make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Now I'm cheating. Um, yeah, so now you can win all the time. So you can do uh, full keyboard control, obviously tab interactions, all that sort of stuff. So it can be completely keyboard accessible. One of the cooler things that actually can uh, even do media stuff, so like images or even uh, stuff like video. So you can have full video. And that would be playing the Portlandia theme because everyone loves a Portlandia joke in Portland. I'm sure that's not old. Um, yeah, OK. So. Um, yeah, so basically I took the website, which is what you see right now, if you go to modernizer.com slash download, and I made it into this, which is the completely same thing inside of a terminal. I uh, call it Modernizer Blessed. It leverages a lot of the same kind of business logic from the uh, .com website, built it in about 10 hours uh, on a whole bunch of Red Bull. Uh, it's pretty hacky. The code's not very good, but it works, and therefore it's awesome. Uh, Paul Irish approves. Um, so yeah, I was going to go over how I built it. Um, the, so again, this is what the website looks like, and it has a bunch of different components. One of them is the frame, just like the big square around it. There's the uh, left-hand column over there. It's all the different options that you can do, stuff like uh, whether or not you want it to be minified, if you want custom classes, that sort of thing. Uh, the center option is all the different detects that are available. Uh, we have a filtering search bar up the top, a button that when you click, you get this pop-up. And yeah, that's it, so let's dive in. Uh, first step is the frame. Like I said, it's kind of React-based, so you might notice this is, excuse me, uh, just a regular uh, React component that returns some custom JSX, in this case, that box. Uh, that's because since it's the terminal, there's no DOM, but it has kind of similar DOM-like structures in Blessed. Uh, for example, box is a lot like a div. There's the text element, which is pretty much like a span. A form is exactly like a form. Uh, there's text box, which is like input. Uh, checkbox, like checkbox, except you get the point. Um, 
so yeah, we have this component that returns that. Uh, the only interesting thing you might notice is there's this thing called style right there. And that's because um, Blessed obviously can't have the full breadth of styling available in the browser. It can only do some kind of simplistic styles. A lot of them are kind of color-based. So you have the BG option for background, background color, uh, FG or foreground for color. Um, and one of the cool things is that it can actually accept any hex value and then it can translate it into a local ANSI variable. So any value that you give it will be converted into the closest matching color. So for example, 222 might become 000. So we were able to use like modernizer custom pink hex color and get the closest thing possible on certain terminals. So we get that, <coughs> just a beautiful box and nothing else. Next step though is the left column. This gets a tiny bit more complicated. Um, same thing, we have a custom JSX thing, it's a box. We have a couple of custom little styling menus right there, like left, top, etc. It's because all of this has to be, um, all the positioning has to be done in line and absolutely. If you've been a web developer for a long time, you might recognize what that looks like. Uh, it's kind of a bummer, but it's the terminal, so, you know. Um, yeah, so when it comes to laying out the stuff, uh, your width and height, oops, sorry, someone's phone. Uh, your width and height, you can set stuff in the number of columns, or rows, or percentages. So that's the, um, obviously we don't have pixels on the terminal, it's per character, so it's similar to M's if you're more uh, familiar with CSS. Uh, you can also set the relativity of the element to the top, bottom, left, or right. Uh, same thing with the columns, rows. Uh, you can also do keywords like to center an element, uh, hard left, hard right. Uh, you have uh, properties like shrink, which allows you kind of flexbox-like styles where you can have the element shrink to its content. Uh, vertical align, so it was actually easier to vertical align in the terminal than it was in the browser for a long time. Uh, you got extra padding too. So yeah, you got all that stuff and you get a left column. And then only other thing to point out, you have these mouse and key properties. And that's because um, in the terminal, we have events, but because terminals aren't meant to use events, it's heavy and not very performant. And so we have to opt into it for the elements we want to care about. Um, so yeah, we have all that and then we get our terminal. Uh, so yeah, now we have our left-hand column right there. We can click on it. Stuff works, that's great. So uh, next thing is going to be the detect list. Um, that is a little bit simpler. The only thing, uh, it's again just a box and the only thing uh, we grab our detects and then we just do this math over all of it. And all that is is uh, positioning. It's, uh, you notice, you'll notice you notice that there's um, all the different detects are repeated over and over again. Uh, in order to make this scrollable, we had to do this um, custom, basically, because uh, Blessed has like a scrollable list, but it's only a single column, and Modernizer doesn't, because we have 300 things, and scrolling through 300 would be ridiculous. Uh, so we hacked our own to make it responsive. So I wanted something like this. On the website, you'll see it's a three column, the two column, the one as you get smaller, just normal responsive. So to recreate that, uh, we did this. It's a, um, we just checked to see if the screen's width is more than 180. If it is, we give it three columns, three, 130s, two, et cetera. Uh, so we have that logic, and then we also just set the positioning. So we do some math, uh, where it was a little bit hard for me, because I'm terrible at math. Um, we check to see uh, the positioning of it in the index, if it's divisible by two or the current number of columns that determines where on the page it gets laid out. Um, sorry, I'm flying through. I didn't realize I was taking this long. Um, yeah, only other thing is this, uh, which figures out its left positioning, uh, where we... Uh, just do some basic multiplication to figure out what percentage it should be laid out at. Um, then that's it. And now we get this page where we get it. So that oop, has to be bigger than that. So as you scroll it down, it's one page. If you get it really tiny and go down, it goes to two, etc. It's super neat. And we can scroll it. Hooray. Uh, so next up was the search bar up the top. Uh, we want to be able to filter stuff down so that if you only wanted to look at like CSS properties or something, you can do that. And so oh, there's a quick GIF of it working, in case you didn't believe me. Um, so we have a text box up the top, which is just like an input. Um, and then on key press, all the meat of the logic of what's happening is in there. And all we do is grab the value and pass it to a thing called Fuse. Uh, Fuse is another node module. Uh, all it is is a fuzzy search implementation. Give it a couple of different properties um, where we search for stuff. So Modernizer is kept in this giant JSON object that represents all the metadata. Um, and then we search over those keys, and then we pass it into Fuse. Uh, like so, on key press, and then we get the results, and we pass it into Lodash to get an intersection. If there's results, we show them. Uh, otherwise, if we don't have any search, we show the entire metadata or all the detects at once. And so, yeah, now we can uh, say, doop. we can click up here and type in grid for the new CSS grid, and we get grid and gradients, and it works, sorry. Um, 
Next up is that build button up in the right. It's super easy. It's just a button element, just like it would be in the browser. Just have some inline style set. And now we get that pink button up at the top. Last thing is gonna be the pop-up, which was, if you've never been to the Modernizer website, we have a bunch of different output options. It's not just one file. You can copy a config if you wanna add it to like a grunt situation, or you can demo it on CodePen. Uh, and so we wanted to recreate that. Here we go. Um, again, we do it in a box. Uh, Pop-up menu item is just a custom element that we created within Modernizer Blessed uh, that just represents each one of those lines. Uh, only neat thing here is the modernizer.build, which is our Modernizer CLI tool um, that's powering both the website and this. You pass in the config, which is all the different things you checked off, and then we return the result over to Clipperoo, which is another node module that just copies crap to your uh, clipboard. So. Uh, yeah, so now we can go over here, check off something, hit build. Oop, 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 oop. Oh, wrong one. That was the button to prove I could make a button. And then copy the clipboard, and we can go over to code, paste it, and we have the whole custom build copied to my clipboard, which is cool. And then last step is just check it out if you want to. Uh, it's on GitHub under my user and Modernizer Blessed. Uh, just a couple of quick warnings. The code's not very good. It's pretty hacky. Uh, it doesn't work uniformly across all terminals, but if you want to make that better, feel free to PR. If you don't want to have to clone a whole repo, though, you can actually SSH directly into my server as uh, donuts at patrickkettner.com. Password is donuts. It'll open up the Blessed session directly in your terminal. Uh, it's the only thing you can do. And um, I appreciated the art on the website, so I actually made that also work with the emoji. Um, the password is the emoji as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, warning, uh, output doesn't work because you can't copy to your clipboard through SSH. Um, the mouse may or may not work because your terminal might be crappy. And you also might crash my server because it's like the tiniest droplet in the internet. Uh, but yeah, that was it. Uh, my name is Patrick Kettner again. That was my user. Uh, feel free to contact me for anything. And yeah, thanks for having me. Cheers.